Now, uh, again, just kind of going through, um, and I am particularly would like to go over, especially number 36, because it is one of the problems that you have to multiply both of them by. Now, somebody asked me earlier today, again, how do I know when to use substitution or when do I add them? All right, so again, one last time. Every time you're going to use substitution, it will have either a y equal or it will have an x equal. All right, right now, neither one of them is set up as x equal or y equal, so I know I'm just going to have to add them. That's what it boils down to. All right, so in this particular case right here, we talked earlier today about how do I figure out what do I multiply by. Now, this one right here, we said today we could just multiply this one by 4 and multiply this one by 6, and you would be in good shape. However, one of them has to be negative. So it would either have to be negative 4 or negative 6. Now, I said for those of you guys who are thinking, though, we could, instead of make it 24, make it... 12. Thank you very much. We can make it 12. So now, again, here is what we want to do. All right, we're trying to make the 6x and we're trying to make the 4x eliminate. Right? So, in order to do that, all right, in order to do that, all right, we're going to go ahead and multiply the first equation by. 2, and then we're going to multiply the second equation by negative by three. Three. negative 3. Oh, All right, there we go. Now, again, the reason why we're doing that, the reason why we're doing that, again, because now the x's are exactly the same, one positive and one negative. Quickly now. Can you? Actually, just kidding, that would make sense. All right, now, um, just to make sure... All right, you understand what I say, because some people say it, see it differently. If I wanted to eliminate the y, I could multiply the top equation by 7, seven and the bottom equation by negative five. negative 5. Now, again, it makes no difference, but to me, I just see the x. I see the x, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that first, all right? Now, all right, I'm going to multiply the top equation by 2. If I multiply the top equation by 2, 12x minus 10y equals negative 20. And then I have negative 12x plus 21y equals 75. How is that? Everybody good? And now it's a matter of underneath... We're adding them, and the x's cancel. All right, because the x's cancel, I end up with, go ahead. Um, 11x. 11. I love them y, sorry. Equals. Equals 55. Exactly. Now, some kids have made that mistake before. They accidentally put x instead of y, which, again, if I see that, just mess everything up. Because then when you substitute it back in, you'll substitute it into the wrong variable. All right, so now we know 11y equals 55, so we obviously know now y is equal to what? 5. five. All right, now that I know y is 5, we're going to plug y in. All right, so we're going to pick the first equation, 6x minus 5 times 5 equals negative 10. Yes, sir? Are you allowed to pick the bottom one? Yes, you can. All right, you can. Next question. Okay, great. So now since you're um, like multiplying, like, y equals y, and it would be 25. No, 25. Right, right, because listen to me. I'm making this y right here a 5. Oh, okay. I'm replacing y with 5. All right? So now finish solving 6x minus 25 equals negative 10. So now I have 6x is equal to 15, right? And so x equals 
15 over 6. And then we reduce that by 3. 5 over 2. So my answer is 5 over 2, comma, 5. All right, yes, sir, good for you. It's all right. Will you verify do, like, instead of 15 over 6, like 2.5? 2.5 is perfect for me. 2.5 is good. 2.5 is good. All right, little dirt never hurt. Let's go. What? All right, now, listen. For everybody else, now, even for Miss Pliego's class, I really appreciate you guys being here. Now we're going to talk about typing it into the calculator quickly. We're going to type it into the calculator quickly. So my class, you should be, I'm not kidding you, 30 seconds. You should be able to write both equations in 30 seconds. All right? Now, again, I would caution, I would like for you to write it as Y1. All right, after you put Y1, you put a parentheses. So this is parentheses, Connor. I really appreciate that, but that's what that uh, vacuum cleaner is for. Yeah, but they're big pieces. Okay, all right. Well, I, I really want you to listen. Okay, so do as quickly as you can. Shh, quickly as you can. All right, so Y1 is equal to, Y1 is equal to negative 10 minus 6X divided by negative five. Now, Miss Plagos class, are you okay with that? Yeah. Right, I just shift everything over, solving for y. All right, now, y2, again, start with open parentheses. Then it's negative 25 minus four x divided by negative seven. Everybody okay with this? Everybody okay? All right, now, Please go to your calculator now and practice even on your calculator. Type that in, Y1, type it under Y2, second, calc, five, enter, enter, enter. All right? And then we'll have it. 2.55. Anybody have any issues with that? Anybody have any issues? Now, again, listen to me. I'm trying to let you know something. If you can do that, you can do them all. That's honestly as hard as it can get. Oh, wait, really? That's honestly as hard as it can get. All right? I can show you something. All right. So for question number 26. Now listen. How do you tell whether you multiply 2 or 1? You ready to look at this? In this equation right here, it would be good if that was a negative 2x. So I can just multiply that equation by negative 2. And then now what will happen? The x's will cancel out. You see what I'm saying? Yes, that was the next thing I was just going to say. Or if you wanted to, you could multiply the top equation by negative 4, and now the y values will cancel. Well, because 1's already a 4. If this is already a 4, okay, I could just say multiply that by 1. You see what I'm saying now? Oh, okay, yeah. Right? If you, you, you want to make it easy. So hopefully it's one that you only have to multiply one. That's a, that's a medium. The hard one is when you have to multiply two. Easy is when you can just add them straight down. All right? So now let's carry on. Here we go. Uh, does anybody have one in particular they want to look at? Reagan. 38. We're going to 38. Everybody take a look at 38. All right, very nice for number 38. I think this is like the one we were just discussing. You got it? Okay, somebody else. She said she's okay. Okay, let's look at 33. Let's look at 33. All right, here we go. On 33. Now, again, um, in my opinion, Everybody should look at this and say, I think this is an easy one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's okay. All right. How do I know it's easy? Sandra, let's look. You can do it straight down. Yeah, because this right here is will cancel when you add them. Boys, you guys with me on this. All right. Now, hey, listen for this one second, though. If I wanted to, let's say I wasn't paying attention, I could multiply this by 2 
and this by negative 7. You see that? Right? But of course, that's why I say look at everything first. Look at everything first because this right here is a nice little simple problem because when you add them, the y values cancel out. The y values cancel. Hold on. Go. Okay, if you did multiply it like 7 and 2, would you still be able to cross out 5 and 5? Once no, like no, went, like because that like becomes a 35 and a 10. Oh, okay. okay, listen now. Again, there's a lot in here. All right, I'm trying to make this as helpful as I possibly can. Just eat and raise your hand when you have a question. All right, now we're going to add this. I got 9x is equal to 40. Now, again, this one's kind of annoying because it's a fraction, all right? But still, x is equal to 40 divided by 9, or 40 over 9. Michael. Oh, you divide I added 25 plus 15, right? Shh, 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 shh. 25 plus 15. Michael, you all good now? Yeah. All right, what? What if we did it with decimals? Um, I'm okay with using decimals, but listen, the problem with decimals is they get rounded, and then you're wrong. Okay, leave it as a fraction. Your calculator will do all the fraction work with you. Connor, I'm really working. All right? The fra let the calculator do the work, and let me show you what I mean by that. If you have your graph and calculator, now we're going to an important time right now so I can show you how to do all of the fractions work with the calculator. All right? So here we go. I'm going to use the second equation. All right? So 2 times 40 over 9 minus 5y equals 15. Hey, I'm hearing people. All right? All I want you to do right now, hey. No, you're not. I have 2 times 40 over 9. So on your calculator, you can literally go 2 times 40 divided by 9, map, enter, enter, and it will give you 80 over 9. Now, again, don't take my word for it. Do that on your calculator. Even though I would tell my kids, you're, you, you, it's embarrassing if you can't tell me what 2 times 40 is. 80 over 9. That is the answer. I know what the decimal is. All right, it's a repeated decimal. That's why I say don't use the decimals. All right? Because you start rounding. Wait, how do you run the fraction again? Math, yeah. enter, enter. Math, enter, enter. When you hit math, F-R-A-C comes up. What? Quick. Okay. You know how people do like 40 x and 4 all the time? That's it. No, but I got something else. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. 2 times 40 divided by 9, math, enter, enter. 80 over 9. 100% of the time. I will, I'll show you later because I can scroll and show you why you made a mistake. All right? Now, the next part. All right? The next part is solving for y. So I have minus 80 over 9 minus 80 over 9. So now, on your calculator, you type in 15 minus 80 divided by 9. Math, enter, enter. And somebody tell me what that is. 55 over 9. Come on, guys. I'm showing you how to use your calculator. Shh. What? Math, enter, enter. Math, enter, enter. The calculator turns the decimal back to a fraction. What? I don't get why you would do what? I, I just want to know what you said. Connor, I, you're distracting me. Sit down. You're here to learn. Say it. What? I don't get why you need to buy 15 I said 15. That's why I want you to get your calculator and do it with me. So you don't have to keep saying things that you don't know what you're talking about. 
You're too smart to be doing that. I said, I'm subtracting 80 over 9. What is 15 minus 80 over 9? If you would do that on the calculator, you would understand it. I don't think it's funny. Now, I'm solving for y. Put your hand down. I'm dividing both sides by negative 5. I'm dividing by negative 5. Now, I would want every one of my students to look up there and say, the obvious answer is negative 11 over 9. That's what I would want you to say. But let's say we don't see that. All you do is you have the fraction on your calculator. You hit divided by negative 5, math, enter, enter, and it tells you that y is equal to negative 11 over 9. That's what it tells you. And then you have the answer as an ordered pair. And the ordered pair is 40 over 9, comma, negative 11 over 9. That's what you have. So the fractions and stuff would be multiplied, like let's say you have like 4 times 2 thirds, like 4 parentheses, 2 thirds, and what's the multiplication? That's what it's telling, that's exactly right. And then what about the big? Divide. Get your calculator out and do it. Follow along with me. If you need a calculator, we'll go over there, like I said. Go get one. It's in my top drawer. You guys are not coming prepared. I can't help you. Go get a calculator. Top drawer. Left. Side. Go all the way around the desk. All right. Now, we're going to type it in as Y1. All right? So here we go. Y1. We have parentheses, 25 minus 7x divided by 5. And on the next one, we have 15 minus 2x divided by negative 5. Type that in the calculator. Practice. That's what you're here for. Now, second calc. 5, enter, enter, enter. All right? Freddie, I want him brave enough to ask me a question. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's his problem. He doesn't ask questions like some of the other kids in my class. All right? Now, do you agree you got a decimal? Yes. All right. Now, this is what I was trying to tell you. Listen to me. The answer is X comma Y, correct? Yeah. So now what I want you to do is go to the home screen, which is second quit and go math, enter, enter. And it will automatically convert the x to a fraction. And what does it come out to be? 40 over 9. 40 over 9. Now, we want to know what the y value is. So listen to me. This is a nice little feature. If you hit the alpha button, all right, and the y button, and then hit math, enter, enter. And I think the y is over the 1. Yeah. So you hit alpha, 1, you hit alpha, and then the 1. The alpha is really hard because it's the bright green button on your calculator. Jeez, but it doesn't say alpha. And then you say hit 1, then you hit 1, and the Y value comes in, correct? Then once Y is on the screen, you just hit math, enter, enter, and it converts the Y value that was in your ordered pair into a fraction. Negative. It's really nice. Yeah, that was the bell. That was the bell? No, it was. It was. All right. See, and you were about to yell at me. All right. Great job. Who's not here? What student from my class? Everybody here? Yeah, I think everyone's here. And who's not here in your class? Oh, Ryan Terra is here. Ryan Terra. Who else? Who else? I don't know. I want your here. Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Hit the road. Hit the road. Hey, see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Same time. Same amount of fun. You're welcome. Mr. Stroud. Mr. Stroud. You were about to ask me because I said it was time to go. Yeah. I was about to. I'm not fun. Where is the alpha button?
button? Where's the alpha button? Where's the alpha button? Look at this video. You are Where is the alpha button? It couldn't be. You're a video.